Remote HMI access can be a huge benefit for any engineer because you can quickly and efficiently get diagnostics with a web browser and you can build more elegant HMI architectures with a control icon from our libraries. Let me show you how easy they can be. As you can see here is the comfort panel we actually want to enable the remote access for. So what I want to do is come over to my project and as you can see in the project I currently have the HMI and I do have a SCADA system with a PC WinCC professional runtime. What I want to do is come down to my runtime settings of this comfort panel Go down to Services and enable Smart Server for Remote Control and Diagnostics for HTML pages. Now I want to give focus to the HMI and click on the Download Arrow button. At this point, he's going to compile the fact that I've added in this web server into the current HMI. Once he's finished with this compilation, I can click on Override All, click on Load. So now he's going to actually load this new configuration down to our HMI panel. And once he's done, as you can see, it appears that it has been finished. We've made the new connection, and now we have a web server enabled on this HMI panel. In order to access that, all I need to do is come down and get a web browser launched. Let's type the IP address of this panel, 192.168.0.2. Click Enter. At this point, now we have our actual web server. The first choice happens to be remote control, and you can see I have smart client right here. Let me give focus to that. Now he's going to give me a security warning, say, hey, look, you want to run this Java application? Accept it. Click on Run. And now I can enter the password. There's a default. Let me just use that default password. And now I have complete access to this HMI. I can actually come over here and I can turn it on. You can see I do have remote control functionality. And in fact, if I come over here and move the slider, I'll see that our actual beer bottle box is going across the conveyor. If I get to an end of travel, you see we actually do get a fault. Now I can click on it, go straight to the ActiveX control for diagnostic viewer window, click on this button, and then he's going to go back and find us exactly where this diagnostic is. It's a high limit exceeded, that is correct. And I can even drive all the way down to the actual point level in this architecture of hardware to find where this fault is. If I solve my problem and click on back, I'll see that everything's fine. Okay, so how about actually integrating this into our SCADA system? What I want to do is actually close this out. I want to go down to the actual screens of this PC Professional Runtime, go to Remote HMI. You'll see that I have absolutely nothing in here other than just a diagnostic button to go back one screen. If I come over to my controls, you'll see I do have this little ActiveX Control HTML browser. Drag and drop it in. Let me resize and refit them. Now if I want to actually tie this to the actual HMI panel, give focus to it, right click, go to properties, go to general. So here at the URL, let me type in his IP address at 192.168.0.2, click enter. And if I want to change an attribute, just go to layout and let's say I want to change it to, let's see, 1800 by 900, the X and Y access. At this point, just give focus to the PC system, click on our compilation. He's going to compile this back into the project because the actual SCADA system is already running. Now let me give focus to it. You see I have nothing here initially. Click on the diagnostic button, go back one, click back on the remote HMI. You see here is our HTML browser. He's going to automatically go and find this web server. He has. Go to remote control again, smart client. Let's enable the Java runtime, click on run, let's type in our password, click enter, and as you can see, I have complete control in my standard HMI architecture. I was able to do this in just a matter of minutes. Now that's engineering efficiency.